Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to revisit Terraria Calamity, but this time in Revengeance mode. This mode adds a new level of difficulty, with bosses having new AI changes and overall much more health. There are also new items and weapons to unlock that are exclusive to this mode. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks everyone. Alright, so on day one, I activate Revengeance mode, and then I open my starter bag for some items. Afterwards, I began chopping down some trees for wood. I traveled right and found a nearby cave with quite a few chests. Inside the chests were an aglet, climbing claws, and also a trinket of key. I'm not really sure what the point of this item was, because you do gain a buff, but after you move or attack, it just deactivates. I stepped on a pressure plate a bit later, and then I got blown up. I mined some gold back up on the surface, and then I went to the desert to make cactus armor. It got dark, so I built myself a little house. On day 2, I had a lot of stuff in my inventory, so I built a chest room. Afterwards, I began mining down to hell. I found some pretty good accessories, like the cloud in a bottle, and also the gladiator's locket that spawns two swords around me. I then mined some iron, some gold, you know the basics, and I also found some light crystals along the way. I explored more of the cave and found Hermes boots and also a spider's nest with a hook inside a chest. It was time to let some NPCs spawn in, so on day 3, I started building more houses. After building some houses, I drank a gravitation potion and searched for some sky islands. I found a red balloon and also some planter boxes. I also found life crystals and also a huge amount of platinum ore on one of the islands. While I was trying to mine the platinum ore, the harpies just wouldn't leave me alone and then yeah they killed me. I got back though and finished mining it all. On day 4, I continued mining to hell while picking up some life crystals along the way. After the demolitionist moved in, I bought a ton of grenades from him and I kinda overspent and bought like 400 to use on the king slime. During the fight, there wasn't really anything special about it, uh, except when I got to about 30% health, it summoned a flying jewel that shot projectiles at me. At night, I built an arena because fighting bosses without one is just really hard. On day 5, I traveled to the left side and noticed there was a line of missing blocks so I decided to check it out and I got a fake enchanted sword shrine so I was pretty bummed out about that. But I went to the jungle afterwards and I found quite a lot of chests that had like the same items over and over again like the anklet of wind. I, pretty, I think I got like three of those. It wasn't all that bad though because I did sell them for gold. I went down deeper in the jungle and then I died. Back up on the surface, I tried to kill King Slime once more and it went a lot better this time since I knew what was going to happen with the jewel spawning in and everything else. I opened the bag and unfortunately I didn't get the slime out. At night there was a message saying that an evil presence was watching me and everyone know what that means, the Eye of Cthulhu is going to spawn. I got pretty messed up during the early phases of this fight because the Eye of Cthulhu's rotations of attacks were just really frequent. When it got to its second phase at just 75% health, yeah things went horribly wrong. Without the slime mount, I wasn't really able to dodge when it started dashing. And then maybe at around 25% health, it got another phase that I never knew about. After all of its dashes, it locks onto you. After I died to Eye of Cthulhu, I kept farming the King Slime until I got the Slime out. This went on from days 6 to 8. 
I went back up into the sky to find some more sky islands and I found the star fairy. I also found some more life crystals inside the smaller uh, islands you could say maybe. On the very right of the world I found a island just filled with crimtain ore. It was like a crazy amount so I ended up mining pretty much all of it. And then I finally made it to hell. On day 9, I went to the underground desert and found Luxor's Gift that spawns extra projectiles depending on the weapon that I use. After I was done dealing with the goblin army, I went to the desert and spawned the Desert Scourge. Instead of one Desert Scourge, there were multiple. The fight was actually fairly easy because using the slime mount to bounce on the body made it so that I don't take any damage at all. I killed the Desert Scourge a couple more times just to get some more items and weapons. At night, I used my new weapon to deal with the Blood Moon. On day 10, it was time to fight the Eater of Souls, so I made an arena above the corruption surface. This weapon was actually really good for this boss fight, but I choked at the end and I took so much fall damage. So being unable to kill the Eater of Souls, I tried my luck at the Hive Mind. I felt like it was definitely possible for me to beat this boss on the first try, but I fell down a hole and without any accessories to stop fall damage, I took like 500 damage and died. From days 11 to 15, I mined some Hellstone in Hell. And then I went back to the Corruption and summoned the Eater of Worlds again. Not gonna lie, it didn't seem like I was gonna beat it because I got trapped underneath and took a lot of damage. But I managed to get out and yeah, things went pretty good from there. I was able to fill up my adrenaline bar, so that helped me do a lot more damage. I got the message saying that an evil presence was watching me, but this time I was ready. I have the slime out now and also a weapon that can clear out the minions a lot better. I opened up the treasure bag and got a counter scarf, which lets me dash through projectiles without getting damaged. On day 17, I made a farm to start making some potions. And then I blew up a meteorite with some bombs. I tried fighting the hive mine again, but I died. So instead, I went to the dungeon and made an arena for Skeletron. But this boss fight was just absolutely crazy, I mean... There was just so many things going on. The hands that I have to watch out for, the plasma blast that shoots out now, and also flying skulls. It can even teleport. I'm gonna need more time to uh, learn these attacks. I mined enough hellstone to make the full molten armor set. With the new armor set, I was able to finally beat the hive mind.
After the hive mine was defeated, I went down underground to mine some aerolite ore and I managed to find the goblin tinkerer along the way. So I bought the rocket boots and also the workshop from him. And then I continued mining some more aerolite ore. I went back up to the surface and combined my rocket boots and Hermes boots to make the specter boots. And then I took some sunplate blocks from the sky islands to make a sky mill to start making aerolite armor, as well as some clouds. In this playthrough, I'm looking towards playing the melee class, so I made the wind bladed. At night, I made some more houses for more NPCs to spawn. On day 19, I mined some more aerolite ore, and then I had to deal with a goblin army. Seeing the monsters just flying all around was actually super funny to me. After the goblin army was defeated, I made the full aerolite armor set, which negates fall damage. Although I will be losing out on some defense. It was nearing towards nighttime, so I expanded the arena at the dungeon, and then I fought Skeletron once more. After Skeletron was defeated, I went down the dungeon and collected any water candles I found, and also opened up some golden chests. On day 20, I decided to make some wings, so I killed some more harpies for their feathers. After returning home, I made the skyline wings. At night, I spawned the slime god, and yeah, I didn't do any damage to it at all. I shouldn't say I did zero damage to it maybe maybe like a little bit you know on day 21 i fought the slime god once more but this time with some buffs and man those buffs are actually like a game changer With the new material from the slime god, I made the gelatic blade. I needed more purified gel, so I killed the slime god once more. After getting enough purified gel, I made the full static gel armor set. On day 22, I went to hell and built a really long bridge for the wall of flesh. But then I accidentally killed one of the voodoo demons and spawned it by accident. And clearly, I was not ready for it. I did however get it to like 40% health before I ran out of platform and died. I returned back and this time I was ready. I drank all my potions and yeah. I really love this weapon for this boss fight especially because it can go through walls and you don't really have to worry about um, staying too close to it. 
There wasn't anything particularly special about this fight, except um, yeah, whenever it dashes, it kind of kind of creeps me out. I opened up the treasure bag and got a demon's heart that increases my accessory slot by 1. After returning to the surface, I upgraded my specter boots to lightning boots. From days 23 to 30, I went to the corruption and broke some altars to spawn in the new hard mode ores. I first mined palladium ore and then worked my way towards mithril and then finally to adamantite. I also found the wizard while mining. After mining a load of adamantite, I made the full armor set and it gave me a really nice boost to my defense. I also made a storage unit to put my essentials in. I spent the rest of the night just building more houses for NPCs. On day 31, I built a little box in the sky to fight the destroyer. And then I went to the Sky Islands to get some Souls of Flight. I also added some honey for some life regeneration. While I was waiting for night to fall, I went down to do some more mining and I actually found the Onyx Excavator Key. And it's basically a mining machine, I'm telling you guys, it's crazy. When night fell, I summoned the Destroyer and it actually reached to me, so... Yeah, I got messed up by that. Without my usual box strategy, I had no way of actually winning against this thing. On day 32, I did some more mining and I found a arctic diving gear accessory that's going to be really useful for when I go into the abyss. I made another chest room because I filled up all of my other ones. I decided to fight the Kragen before actually attempting to do the other mechanical bosses. I went down under this area so that the Kragen wouldn't be able to attack me until it went to its next phase. So yeah, I was pretty much getting free damage off of it. When I got it to its next phase, it started dashing at me at pretty fast speeds. And when I got it to even lower health, oh my god, this thing went crazy. I got the soul of Kragen from the boss and it basically acted like wings, but it dropped icicles whenever I flew. From days 33 to 36, I mined some cryonic ore and then I found a tundra's leash that spawned a dog. I kept mining and then I got stuck in some webs and then a black recluse killed me. The mount was actually really cool and it even does damage whenever you rammed into enemies. After getting enough cryonic ore, I made the full Daedalus armor. I also made the Dark Light Greatsword. It was almost nighttime, and I built another box up in the sky, hoping that it would be high enough so that the destroyer wouldn't reach me. But of course, it did. So once again, I was forced to attack it from the outside. I just had to make sure that I don't get hit by the actual head of the destroyer because that part does the most damage. When I got it to a much lower health, it started charging at me way faster than usual.
After getting some hollowed wires, I used them to make the flare frost blade, the projectiles home in on enemies. I then fought the next mechanical boss right after, the twins. The moment I damaged them just a little, they immediately went into their second phase. Right after twins, you know what's next, Skeletron Prime. I know I said how Skeletron Prime is the worst mechanical boss out of the three for me, but this time it wasn't so bad, even though it was buffed up a lot more. So after losing all of its arms, it still could do pretty much the exact same thing as if it still had its arms. But now it adds in the Skeletron projectiles and it also circles around me every once in a while. I made the mechanical cart with all three pieces, and then I made the pickaxe axe with the souls that I got from the bosses. I also made the ponage hammer, and also the catastrophe claymore. I fought the wall of flesh again because I needed another pone hammer since I used it to make the ponage hammer. I visited the Brimstone Crag to farm some Essence of Chaos to be able to make the Charred Idol. This item is used to summon the Brimstone Elemental. I thought this fight was going to be really easy because of how well I did in my last playthrough, but it turned out it wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be. From days 38 to 40, I decided I needed more health, so I visited the jungle and farmed some more life fruits. After I got back home, I realized that I was able to get more life fruits because of my armor that gave me more max health. So I went back to the jungle and got the rest of them and also mined some chlorophyte ore. On day 46, I tried my luck with the brimstone elemental again, but it didn't happen. When I got it to about 50% health, it started shooting laser beams at me, which I was not expecting. I kept trying and trying until I was finally able to beat this boss. After defeating the Brimstone Elemental, I kind of wasted my time mining charred ore because I realized it wasn't really that useful to me. On day 47, I found a plantera bulb nearby, so I decided to make an arena, and making the arena with this mount was really easy. After finishing the arena, I broke the bulb and started the fight. While fighting this boss, I found out that my Catastrophe Claymore was actually really good because of how many debuffs it can apply to enemies. So what I've noticed about this boss is that there wasn't anything really special or game changing, other than the fact that it did have a lot more health, but that was pretty much it. I 
I returned home and opened up the bag and got a hook that was a big upgrade to my ruby hook. From days 48 to 54, after the Plantera was defeated, there were new monsters that spawned in the dungeon, which dropped a lot better weapons and accessories. On day 55, I needed to make the enchanted sword to create a better weapon, but without a hollow desert, I had to make my own. I kept killing light mummies until I got the light shard from them. I got back home and made the Ark of the Ancients. On day 56, I made my way into the jungle temple to fight the golem. I absolutely love this boss because of how big the arena is inside. Everything was normal up until it reached its second phase. That's when things got a bit wild. It started shooting a lot of projectiles and the head moved in like a square shape. I got the pick saw, so I broke the altar and took it back with me. On day 57, I went into the abyss. And this place was really creepy. And the monsters there were actually super strong, so I had to be really careful. I mined as much scoria ore as I could before I ran out of breath. After I respawned, I made the Hydrothermic Armor set. I also made some other weapons as well. On day 58, I went back to the dungeon and summoned the Lunatic Cultist. Now this boss was just an absolute nightmare to fight against. Whenever he tried to make his clones, um, even though you attack the right one, the clones still stay. And this process kept on going until it reached 6 other clones. I got it to about 10% health before I died. On day 59, I summoned the Solar Eclipse to kill some Mothrons for the Broken Hero Sword. After I got what I needed, I returned back home and upgraded my Ark of the Ancients to the True Ark of the Ancients. I went back to the dungeon hoping that this weapon would be able to bring me victory, but I did a lot worse. I gave up on killing the lunatic cultist for now, so I summoned the ravager instead. And this thing was like a hundred times <laughs> stronger. I ended up having to run away from it. So not being able to kill the Ravager or the Lunatic Cultist, I tried my luck with Astrum Dias. And like the Ravager, I failed miserably. On day 62, I made the Soul Harvester from enemies that dropped the Plague Canisters. And once more, I fought the Lunatic Cultist. After finally defeating the Lunatic Cultist, I got the Idol on Staff and it was a really good magic weapon to use, but I was gonna go the melee class so I ended up not using it at all. From days 63 to 65, I killed the monsters at the Celestial Pillars, starting from the Nebula Pillar, and then the Solar Pillar, and then the Vortex Pillar. I used the meld blobs to make meld construct from the celestial monsters and then I made the entropic claymore. I figured this would be a good weapon since the projectiles home in. From day 66 to 71, I kept killing bone leaves until I was able to make the master ninja gear. 
Then from days 72 to 73, I farmed enough materials to make the blood orange and miracle fruit to increase my max HP. On day 74, I made a long platform to fight the moon lord on. After finishing making the platform, I went back to the Stardust Pillar to finish it off. I then waited for Moonlord to spawn. Now this boss fight was just extremely difficult because even though after you take out the eyes, they're actually still there. So you have the eyes from the Moonlord's body shooting at you and the quote-unquote eyes that popped out shooting at you as well. And there we go, Moonlord's finally defeated, and I even got the melee weapon from it, as well as the Celestial Onion that increases my accessory slot by one. With some of the Luminite bars, I used it to make the Seraph Tracers, because I think having more mobility is better than having more armor. Alright, so from day 75 to 100, I did some major grinding, I killed the Golem a couple thousand times until I got the eye of the golem and I also farmed the moon lord and that took like forever. I also killed the ravager a couple times with my new arc of the elements and this weapon is just absolutely amazing. I mean look at the damage it's doing. Yeah, so after killing Moonlord a few more times, I had enough Luminite bars to be able to make the full Solar Flare armor. And after wearing the armor set, I had a whopping 166 defense. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys want 200 days in Terraria Revengeance mode, let me know in the comments below. Leave a like, and also subscribe. And one more thing. I do have a second channel that I will be posting Minecraft videos on, so if you guys want, go check that out. Link will be in the description below. Alright guys, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.